did you know that the colon which is also called the large intestine being part of the digestive system absorbs water and mineral salts this doesn't mean that water is never reabsorbed in any part of the gut except the colon however towards the end of digestion as digestion gets to a halt then the colon will always absorb the remaining water and mineral salts that hasn't been absorbed in the small intestine one unique thing about the large intestine is that people have got different large intestines in terms of structure what do i mean there are people whose large intestines have got some unique cells these cells are known as polyps now polyps are found in colons any part of the colon anywhere within the colon but not for all people there are people about 15 to 20 percent of the population that have polyps are polyps natural on one hand they look natural on the other hand they can cause cancer now polyps are caused by an abnormal production of cells when the cells within the colon the cells that produce mucus the cells that are part of the mucosa or the mucosal region those cells can abnormally multiply to lead to what we call polyps these polyps do not have symptoms in most cases when you grow polyps in your large intestine chances are you will never even know that you have them they can be so numerous they are not big per se they are simply five milliliters millimeters or less the most giant of them can go up to 30 millimeters so you can see they are diminutive in other words they are tiny and small why talk about polyps today karim's clinic brings us the relationship between polyps and colon cancer also known as colorectal cancer or bowel cancer now polyps as we have mentioned can always be treated when you have polyps doctors can always remove the polyps how do you know that you have polyps sometimes it's very difficult to know because they're not things that will cause you symptoms even though rarely do they cause symptoms like blood in the stool but supposing you don't have symptoms how will you know it is very difficult to know however when you begin developing problems within your colon a process known as colonoscopy can always be used to find out colonoscopy is where a flexible tube is inserted into your colon and a camera is used to observe the nature of the colon and how the colon looks like to identify the polyps polyps actually look like mushroom they have the mushroom head and then a little bit of a tail and they're attached to the colon now our topic of today is colon cancer colon cancer is a type of cancer that be, that starts in the colon usually when we when we are naming cancer you name it according to where it began if it begins in the rectum moving upwards to, towards the colon it would be called colorectal cancer 
or rectum cancer. If it begins from colon downwards, then we say that is colon cancer. Either way, colon cancer spreads towards the rectum and rectal cancer also spread towards the colon, hence the mix of the name colorectal or just colon cancer. Now, colon cancer affects adults at any stage. It can come at any age, whether young, old, but the age that we are looking at so deeply is 45 years of age and above. It is always good to do cancer checkup or screening the moment you clock 35. You need to be concerned, but when you are 45 years of age, you need to make it mandatory looking at cancer, the, the colon cancer. Usually there is a uh, family tendency in the growth of polyps. When your family members suffer polyps or older members had suffered polyps before, or an, an operation was done to anyone in your family on polyps, or rather to remove the polyps, always make it a habit of checking because polyps usually run in the family. So, these polyps, when they grow out of control, it is them that lead to colon or colorectal cancer. And the cancer, as we had said before, it is abnormal multiplication or growth of cells. Somebody is thinking, where do these cells come from? They are part of the uterus, of they are part of the colon. It is those colon cells that begin to behave differently and abnormally. When they behave differently and abnormally, they give rise to polyps. So polyps are not external. They are not caused by any pathogen or any germ from outside. But again, as we are going to look at the risks, your behavior or your feeding behavior can make the genes within your colon behave differently to give rise to polyps, which when cancerous would lead to colon cancer. What are the symptoms of colon cancer? Colon cancer begins, the first clinical symptom that you would identify is rectal bleeding. When you see blood in your stool, then it could mean that you have colon cancer. Alas, we had spoken about hemorrhoids. So when you see blood in your stool, don't just say or conclude that you have colon cancer. You could also be having hemorrhoids and there are other um, conditions like the Crohn's disease um, and other ulcerative diseases that can always lead to blood in stool. So before you conclude you have colon cancer, rule the rest out. Number two, a feeling that your bowel doesn't empty completely. If you are this person who visits the bathroom or the washroom and when you defecate, it doesn't come out completely. Or rather, if it comes out, you are feeling, you, you feel like you still have the urge to poop. So that feeling, again, is most common when you have issues with your stomach, stomach ulcers, H. pylori, um, so on and so forth. But it is also a symptom of colon cancer. Of course, in more lessons to come or in more videos to come, we will still talk about ulcers, stomach ulcers, and we also talk about H. pylori, which is a big issue. Another symptom is feeling weak and fatigue. You know, when you have cancer, the cancer eats a lot of food in your body. You know, it consumes a lot. You know, for it to grow, it has to take 
away a lot of nutrients from you. So you remain weak and fatigued and in the process, you also have weight loss. So when you lose your weight, even though not everybody loses their weight at the onset, when you don't lose weight and you have every other <clears throat> symptoms, you can still always go for screening. There is that persistent abdominal discomfort in your stomach when you have colon cancer. So you feel cramps, stomach cramps. Sometimes you just feel pain from nowhere or just cramps. And sometimes you experience gas. So you could be treating gas, acid. You could be using omeprazole esomeprazole stop using omeprazole and esomeprazole can you go for screening unless you are sure can you see your doctor so that your doctor tells you this is indeed cancer this is indeed ulcers this is just a case of gas a lot of people are treating diseases that they, that they are not even suffering from a lot of people are treating ulcers when they have H. pylori so a persistent change in your bowel also signify the condition. If today you are diarrheaing with no reason, after that, after a short while, you are constipating, the next time you have a change in the consistency of your stool, then you could be having cancer. This is colon cancer. Many people who have colon cancer experience no symptoms, especially in the early stages of this particular disease. And when the symptoms appear, they are likely, they will likely vary, you know, depending on the size of the cancer, the location within your intestine, is it in the upper part of your small, your large intestine or the lower part, is it towards the rectum or towards the ascending um, colon? So I'm saying, if you have these symptoms, do not worry, but see your doctor. What causes cancer? We have talked about the polyps, but this is largely within the DNA. And you know, when polyps come, not all the polyps will cause cancer. There are those that will just become tumors that are harmless, and others will come, will become cancerous tumors so when you have polyps or when you do a checkup and find out that you have polyps don't begin crying that they should be removed no they can only be removed when they are misbehaving a lot of people live with polyps and they don't even know the polyps are there they have never had issues with their stomachs they've never had issues with their gut the alimentary canal so you don't need to get too much worried but what i'm saying is when you clock 35 years of age at least do um a screening once in five years but when you attain the age of 45 and you realize you have stomach issues you have gas cramps so and so on and so forth make it an attempt make it a behavior screening for these cancerous issues before you grow older or you attain the risk so what are the risk factors age is a risk factor the older you grow the higher the chances of you getting colon cancer the rates of colon cancer in people younger than 50 have been increasing though but doctors aren't sure the reason why but what I'm saying is, as you grow older, kindly do checkups. It is also worth noting that when you are a crossbreed of African and American race, it has been proven beyond doubt that African Americans have greater risk of colon cancer than people of other races. So if you also have an, a history in your family line, another thing that makes it so risky for us is the inflammatory intestinal conditions. We have people who have diseases of the stomach and these diseases of the stomach are always there. Maybe they only give you a break for five 
months or five days, you always have issues with your stomach. You can never keep away acid acid medications. I will create still a video on that. But what I'm saying is, take good care of yourself. Avoid inflammatory conditions within you. Make sure the acidity, remember acid causes inflammation. The acidity in you is optimal. Remember even the, the stomach itself does not require too much of base. It is acidic because there is HCL. But too much of acid is also dangerous. So, low fiber and high fat diet is also another problem. If you are eating high fat diet, you are feeding on high fat diet, processed meat, kindly stop. Fiber is good. High fat and high calories are not good for your health. Red meat should be eaten sparingly. You don't just eat red meat anyhow. If you are diabetic, due to insulin resistance, there is an issue within the colon. Remember, insulin resistance have an increased risk of colon cancer. So if you are diabetic, make it an attempt or a behavior or a habit being screened most of the time. People who smoke, same as those who do alcohol, usually risk their lives to cancer. So you can always do your screening. The foods that you're supposed to eat are fruits, eat fruits, eat vegetable, eat whole grains. What I usually say is instead of blending that fruit to make juice, just eat the whole fruit. Sometimes when you're doing vegetables, don't, you don't need to cook them, just steam them. If you are doing grains, try eat them whole, not processed. If you are supposed to drink alcohol, do it in moderation, if at all you have to. Exercise is very important. At least try to exercise three to four days a week. 30 minutes a day is just enough. Maintain a healthy weight. If you are obese, colon cancer can eat you up. Now, today, having talked about colon cancer, I would say that the number of young people suffering from colon cancer or developing colon cancer is increasing at an alarming rate, probably due to our dieting, poor diet. So that is all Karim's clinic had today. I pray that you attain the best of health. Thanks for listening.